Hi, I'm QDC. At the time's recording, I have just finished building Tamiya's M8 Howitzer motor carriage. And my next uh, project will be Tamiya's JS3 Stalin tank. And this is also known as the IS3. Now before I start building this particular kit, I decided that I wanted to practice on painting 135th scale faces. For most modelers that are out there, including myself, painting 135th scale faces is a challenge because it's very, very small, very, very tiny. And so it takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice to actually uh, make it look right. And so I decided to paint, uh, practice painting model faces before I start this particular project, this, uh, the JS3 Stalin tank. But I've also thought that maybe the viewers, my viewers, you would also enjoy watching me um, practice on painting model faces. So I decided to make this particular video. So in this video you're going to see me um, just practice on painting model faces and I hope that you get something out of this video so you could actually learn how to paint your own model uh, faces from a very small 135th scale uh, figure that's face that the head, the head is about this particular size. So here is the test um, figure. I didn't build the entire figure, just the torso and the head. And this is just to show you how I'm going to paint the face. Before I start painting the, painting the head, I want to talk to you more about the types of paints that we'll be using. What I'm pointing at right now is the acrylic paint. And this particular acrylic paint is made by Liquitex, and it's a professional acrylic artist color. This is going to be my base coat for the head. And after I apply this on the head, I'm going to use uh, oil colors. And in this, this particular one is the Windsor and Newton um, oil color family and it's a very nice oil color. The reason why I'm using acrylic as the base coat for my entire uh, for my entire painting of the head is because acrylic paint has a very good tendency to adhere to plastics um, very well. It's, um, it does not tend to uh, flake off or it doesn't tend to rub off when I apply the oil colors because throughout the entire project I am going to um, do a lot of blending which does create a lot of friction physical friction uh, between the oil color that I have and the painted um, head that I use acrylic as the base I'm going to start the painting process by first painting the base. I'm going to use an acrylic flesh tone paint to paint the entire head. I'm going to draw the eyes and the eyelids. What I have in my hand is a black artist um, pen and this is going to be used to paint the eyes and the eyelids. In my opinion the eyes are very important and using this pen makes it very easy for me to actually make those eyes. I'm going to paint the shadows and the highlights on my figure but before I do that, I want to give an example of how light creates shadows and highlights on a, on a face. What you see right now is a journal that I got free um, from a Dragon kit. It's called Special Ops Journal of the Elite Forces and SWAT Units Volume 28. And this particular booklet, to be quite frank with you, it's not a good read, but it does have a lot of nice pictures uh, for you to use to paint your figures. Um, very nice. 
and to have one in action sequences here too very very nice and also they have pictures of some vehicles like this Humvee for example in which you get to really see it in its elements you notice that there's mud on the wheels and it really gives you a good idea of how the real vehicle works uh, in its environment now I want to focus your attention on to this picture right here this is a picture of a French Marzouin and this picture has a lot of elements that I'm going to copy onto my figure now light is hitting on this soldier's face and it creating shadows here on the side of the face underneath the chin in the eye socket underneath his nose and I'm going to copy that onto my figure I'm painting the shadows I'm going to paint the highlights on my figure and I'm taking it back onto the soldier if you look at the soldier's face again you notice that there's highlights on the forehead on the tip of his nose on the upper part of his lips on the tip of his chin and on his cheeks and I'm going to copy that onto my figure I'm going to paint the highlights Using a completely dry brush, I'm going to blend the colors together. I'm going to paint the dark shadows. If you look at this picture of the soldier again, you're going to see there's dark shadows right along the eyebrow, right there. Inside his nostrils, the tip of underneath his chin, dark shadows in his ears, and dark shadows right inside his nostrils. And I'm going to copy that onto my figure head. I'm painting the dark shadows and the light highlights. Okay, so this is the completed painted model face, and I like my work. The shadows and highlights painted on this face looks very nice and convincing. It does look very real to me, and I like it. Now, this way of painting faces is just only one way of many different ways to paint model faces on a 135th scale figure so I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that this way of painting faces may not work for you there are other different ways to paint faces so I encourage you not to rely just on this video but look for other sources for um, for inspiration and instruction as well and then pick and choose what you like to do with your model kit because in the end, when you paint faces or build model kits, it's all about you enjoying the process. I'm QDC. Thanks for watching.